Apothecary After Dark. Hello, guys. Welcome back to Apothecary After Dark, our podcast, which happens after we close the shop and highlighting the fun things that we talk about behind the scenes and the questions that our customers have. So I'm Danny. I'm Dina. And we are here with a customer request. They wanted a behind the scenes, what magical and witchy practices do we use and the staff use in our day-to-day and running the shop? Like what, what do we really use? So we figured we'd peel back the curtain a little bit and talk about it. Yeah. Well, I think it's a great question because there's so much that can be done. These are some palatable, easy things that you can do to incorporate into your day-to-day. So if you look at my wrists, they are heavily adorned with bracelets. We call her Wonder Woman. I know. And it just, it makes me happy and I change them up, but I wear crystal bracelets and it's part of my everyday practice and also the rings that I wear. So today I'm wearing citrine Mm -hmm. and I'm wearing emeralds and I have a whole assortment of bracelets, but wearing crystals allows the energy to be as part of my auric field throughout the day. And it just helps fortify different energies within me that I'm looking to support or to enhance. So that is a very simple way to incorporate harnessing the power and energy of crystals into your day-to-day work. I don't wear as many crystals in my day-to-day. I have a couple of bracelets on. Um, These are our Zodiac bracelets. So I have one for Capricorn, which is my rising, one for Leah, which is my moon that I share with Danielle, and one for Libra, which is my sun, which I also share with Danielle because we have the same birthday, as many of you know. (laughs) And I do wear a jade bangle. I never take these three off. Um, Then I wear, you'll see gold jewelry, and this is more of an amulet. There is a difference between magical amulets and magical talismans. So These are amulets. Amulets keep negative energy or lower vibrational energy away from you. So think of amulet, the letter A and A for away. And then talisman is something that's luck drawing or good vibration drawing that draws towards you. So I'm not wearing any talismans today, but I am wearing amulets. I have my Italian horn here somewhere. I I never take them off. So they're always like wrapped up and crazy. And then I also have on a um, blessed mother, mother Mary, but for whatever reason, this this is actually, I'm going to do like share with you this little story. Okay. We had sold you know, inexpensive versions of these in silver. Once we had them once, we should probably bring them back. And Danielle was trying to ring somebody up and she's like, what is this under? She's like searching Mary, Mother Mary. And she's like, what are those medals under? And I'm like, oh, blessed mother. She's like, why is it under that? I'm like, because that's what my grandma always called right. it, right? So I always refer to her as blessed mother. It's, it's, it's Mary. And then I have on here a... I also have an Ankh with an emerald. An emerald is very heart opening. So these are amulets to keep me safe and protected and secure. I never take these off. I'm very jewelry lazy. I'm not as adventurous as Danielle, but this is what I do out of my day. Well, it's funny because one of the bracelets that I also wear every single day is the Blessed Mother. Mm. And I am wearing an evil eye bracelet, which also serves to Mm -hmm. ward off any negative energy that's coming my way. So just subconsciously, I'm already yes. doing it and I forgot to even mention it. I so, do all the time. Yeah, yeah. It, it happens all the time. So I those, also have, wait, look. Oh yeah, I have, have an ankle. I have a red string eye on my ankle that I never take off. Yeah. See, so those are some <laughs> yeah. very basic, simple things. Oftentimes I'll, I'll just throw crystals in my pocket, like the little pocket stones, because again, if I want to just fortify that energy within me, they all have different correspondences and meanings. So I'll just grab one and I'll be like, oh, you know what? I want a little harness the sunstone energy of personal power. I'll put that in my pocket. If I want garnet for like grounding and protection and security, I'll put that in my pocket. If I want to like enhance my crown, I might have an amethyst or mm-hmm. a lapidolite and throw that in my pocket. People keep them in their bras. They keep them, you know, out of protection on their uh, desk or by their um, front doors. You can do that. You can use selenite by the entrances. You can also take things like um, salt and herbs and put that across your threshold to kind of ward out any energies. Um, we had go ahead. last week 
Samantha had made this amazing brew of herbs and waters and she put it in this jar and then she did some cleansing and protection work to the shop and she must have laid that that water brewed herb concoction along our front door and along our back door and it smelled amazing. And I didn't realize that she did it because I didn't see her do it. And every single time I walked into the shop, I'm like, wow, this it, it smells really fantastic in the vestibule. And I was like, oh, S- Samantha must have must have done that, but it's such a great yeah. way to either protect your space or bring in abundance because la- lavender, there's definitely lavender in it. Lavender yeah. can be protective. It's also health. It's also um, can be a little bit of love. And it was, it just smelled so fantastic. Yeah. Really, I really saw great. that brew. It was really cool. So that's the thing. You can get a variety of different cleansing waters, including, you know, rose water or lavender water or, mm-hmm. um, it, there's so many. I like the orange, uh, I the love orange, orange water paired with Florida water. You can add some herbs in there. You can use um, smudges that you can burn. You can get car- charcoal discs in a cauldron, and you can use that to energetically cleanse the air in the space, in your office, in your house, whatever. Right. Using um, the burning smoke, yeah. Using the burning smoke. And then afterward, you can even put that type of liquid concoction into a spray bottle, and you could spray, incorporate that into like your Windex and add some of that and spray the windows. So it's not only like yeah. cleaning your windows, but also energetically fortifying your windows. Um, you could spray it on candles to anoint your candles. You can create intention candles as we part of your everyday. We do a lot of yeah. candle work in the shop. We are always burning either uh, an abundance candle or a crown of success candle, um, some type of better business or prosperity candle. So typically if you were to come into the shop, you might see either a green, gold, or orange candle. Those are three colors that are for prosperity workings. And then we're always burning a protection candle as well, because Mm -hmm. when you put yourself out in the public eye, you could open your uh, yourself up to jealousies, which is also known as the evil eye. People either intentionally or unintentionally sending their ill wishes towards you. So we're always burning um, a protection candle mm-hmm. as well. We yeah. also have a, a pretty large altar that we always have roses on of some kind. I don't know if yeah. you caught the caught the swap up. We put red candles this week. Yes. I just felt yeah. the change. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah, because there's different deities that we also work with their energy and we ask for their additional support and protection Mm -hmm. and, you know, tapping into and harnessing their energy with, you know, with reverence, of course. So that's part of our practice. So if there's deities that you really feel a gravitational pull towards, like a lot of our practitioners work with Aphrodite as part of their self-love and self-care practices, Mm -hmm. like Vinny in particular, who's a licensed esthetician. So... Working with those deities as part of your your ritual is a great way to start working with it. As your um, you can add some baths, some salts into your baths with different herbs. Yeah, we have love um, love salts that we've formulated, but you can create your own, and you can add like rose petals and flower petals to all of that. Um, Another thing that I like to do is I like to do pendulum work sometimes. So if I'm if I'm looking at different alternatives or if I'm just doing some self-reflection stuff, I'll do some work with my pendulum. And that's simple yes, no answers, or you can even use like a spirit board if you want to. Um, I haven't done crystal gridding in a while, but that's something that I've been yeah. trained and I really like because if you set up your crystal grid with a specific intention, the energy in those crystals as you set up the intention will carry the intention on your behalf. Even as you exit that space, that will just continue whatever your regular intention is. Yeah, I've been really leaning into... And Daniel's going to laugh when I say this, but speaking my word over people and situations. Okay. So literally speaking, spellcrafting, but out in the open 
is I've noticed it yeah for sure is a very powerful way even it was just my daughter's graduation party and I did a speech and it was very intentional to wrap up the energy of the collective people that were there and to harness all that collective love and then to give thanks for it and direct it towards my daughter so it 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 was specific and intentional but I want to call that in that attention to it because I don't think a lot of people would say giving a speech is magic, but it can be magical. Your word is your wand. Exactly. And there's a reason why it's called spelling because words are very powerful Mm -hmm. and it's expressing and emoting and setting it into creation. So I am a huge fan of that and I think it's extraordinarily powerful. It is. It's powerful to speak your truth too because... I think, you know, what's the first thing that people try to do is they try to silence you or to tell you that what you're saying is wrong or what you believe is wrong by silencing your voice. So I think using your voice in a powerful way to declare who you are and what you want is so important and it's become an integral part of my daily practice, which I know drives a lot of people crazy, but that's okay. I think... More and more people have to use their voice to speak with authenticity Mm -hmm. and to be true to themselves and to express their true perspective and their true voice. And too often there's pressure from society to conform or to shrink back or to not speak truth or to not be open to receiving one's truth. So I think it's an act of defiance and it brings me back to the to our childhood when Pump Up the Volume with Christian Slater was so popular uh, where he had that rogue radio station. It was doesn't like, this microphone speak remind totally, you a little I love bit? It. Yeah, about I, feel, I have like reminiscence of that and I'm just like, yes, the power of the, of the if spoken you, if word. If you can only see the confused look of the very young people that mm-hmm. run our podcast in the background going, what is Pump Up the Volume? By the way, we're Christian old, Slater. but it's fun and it's actually like if you want to understand Gen X and like early rebellion, Such watch Pump great, Up the Volume. Uh, so good. Yeah. But I think, okay, to that same, I love the spoken word, but also I think it's extraordinarily powerful, the written word. Mm. And that's the importance of journaling. And it is a very free way of expressing yourself in a safe environment where you put pen to paper and you are creating. I think it's very cathartic and healing if you have a thought to actually like express it onto paper and and then you're in turn creating it and you're, you're setting it into motion more setting it free. Yeah, exactly. Because otherwise it, it, the way that my brain works, it tends to circle and ruminate until I express it. So it is creation and it is release and it is setting it into motion. So I think that that's really powerful and it doesn't ever have to be for public consumption, but it is the act more so I would say in my opinion than putting it into technology. I mean, people can. It's, I know the younger generation is much yeah. more technological, like savvy and comfortable, but I do think there is magic that comes yeah, from active, putting- with the ink yeah. and the pen to And it becomes our, meditative. Absolutely. I, yeah. I do love that. That's something that we definitely all do, I think, in our daily practice. We cards too, tarot cards yes. and oracle cards. So Pulling like cards. I have every day. so many decks. I'll pull. I'll just gravitate towards a deck that's pulling my attention, and I'll pull a card a day. Yeah. And you would pull cards and then journal on top of it. Yeah, I haven't done that in a minute. I've definitely like s- departed from that practice for a minute. I I never give. Just so you guys know, and I think this is a really important part of any practice, whether it's it's magical practice, spiritual practice, yoga, meditation, whatever. Don't beat yourself up for departing from something and taking a step away from something and then coming back. Because I feel like so often we judge ourselves and we make ourselves feel guilty about things and then it makes it difficult to get back to the thing because we feel so guilty about it. So right now I'm not doing that, but that doesn't mean that I won't go back to that at another time. Just the way my life is, I'm just not at that moment doing that. And, but I did really enjoy doing a, pulling a card and using that as a journal prompt yeah um, and I think that's perfect I'm, yeah. I'm a Reiki master yeah. it has changed and touched and transformed my life in so many ways 
However, am I actively conducting Reiki healing right. treatments? No, I'm not. But is it something that's inherently part of the who I am? Yes, it's woven into the fiber of who I am and right. what I do. But will I go back to it? Sure. Is it a gift that I always have? Yes. And that's the thing about all of this. All of these books unlock mysteries and teachings of all different practices. So sometimes... I'll just be like, you know what? I really want to dive deeper into astrology and I'll pull some of those books. Yeah. Or numerology I pulled the other day and I was like, you know what? What's my life path number? We're seven, by the way. Yes, we're seven. <laughs> we're seven. We're seven. That I yeah. know. Or like, what's your soul plan? And go into, go into that. So like, there's no right or wrong way. So it's okay. But what I do say to people is you can't boil the ocean because people come in they're like, I want to do all the things. I'm like, you can't. One thing at a time. Yeah, one thing at a time. You can't boil the ocean. You can't do everything at once. It will take you forever to learn everything about everything. So just start with one thing and start incorporating that into your life. And then build upon that. And Like if you love crystals, start learning about a specific crystal a day or start carrying it. You can journal about how you like it and what your impression is. Yeah, carrying a crystal a day is a really great way of, of... working with the energies of crystals if you don't want to wear them just throwing them in your pocket i like picking a crystal over the course of a week because it gives you seven days to see how it affects your energy and if it makes a difference and you might see that certain crystals or certain colors might give you a little bit more of a boost at this particular time than others yeah and I had a teacher that said to be a scientist of your own life experience. And I always thought that was interesting by, you know, setting up a little bit of a science experiment and then taking notes and making a plan. So that's why I like the idea mm. of like working, working with by having, what I mean by working with is having the crystal on your physical person. Right. Because when I say work with people, like, what do you mean work with it? You know, no, right. we're not like wielding hammers and building a house together. Right. And but, there's so many classes. Like we offer so many classes. Some are free, some are paid. We have author talks where we invite our authors and we have discussions with them. And I always learn always from that. Learn like so stretch yourself. Sign up for a class. Put yourself in front of something that you haven't learned anything about before, but come to it with a childlike wonder and a curiosity. If, it, if, it, if it's sparking curiosity and joy, yeah. we always say like follow the breadcrumbs of what lights you up. And it's so funny you should say take a class because when I was first getting back into crystals for the second time, I had seen an advertisement on Facebook for connecting with crystals class. And it was all the way in upstate New York, probably like a two and a half hour drive. And my husband was teaching a class for his business on that Saturday. I had nothing going on. And I was like, I'm just going to drive this sign up for this class and drive up two and a half, half hours, which by the way, is this is very much like Danielle. It is not like me. Yeah. I don't like going places by myself where I don't know where I'm going, who's going to be there and like what the layout is. I won't even walk into like a restaurant if I can't see inside and make my husband go far. See, I'm a sad rising. I'm like, let's go. It's an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> but I did this because I was like, you know what? This is interesting to me and I'm going to take a leap. I'm going to try. Mm-hmm. And wouldn't you know... That person that taught that class wound up being becoming my mentor, and it opened up this whole experience. And I don't even know if we would have gotten to the point of the shop if it weren't for that beginning. And when I was so burned out in my career, and every I just wanted out of my career, and I was going through the divorce and everything, I was like, you know what? I used to love all this stuff when I was a kid, I'm signing up for an astrology class. And I just wanted to reinvigorate my astrology class. Mm -hmm. So I found Maria De Simone online and she would teach weekly classes on Wednesdays. So I signed up. So I would take my class, I would shut down my work and go into a conference room and I would just turn off all my tech. I'd be like, I'm in my class right now. And that's what reinvigorated me and connected me with Maria before we opened this. Just following the breadcrumbs of what lights you up is... Will, will lead you into a practice that's meaningful for you. Yeah. And it's so funny because I rely on Danielle's knowledge from that astrology class because we have the same birthday and I never know. Like, I'm like, what am I in the... Because she'll be like, our da-da-da is conjunct the bop bop. I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, it just, it always flies right over my head. Yeah. Um, so it's... it's you something, sound healing. Yeah, it's just something that yeah. you keep coming back to. So, you know, that's that's something that we come back to time and time and time again. 
but you know, those things are going to be specific to you. It isn't that you have to have your witchy or your ma magical path take any specific way. It should be based upon like what lights you up and what interests you the most and yeah. start with that thing. I think it's so important. Totally. And that's, that's why we have so many different books because yeah. we don't know where what what's your starting point going to be. We don't know. We have right. to have all the things. We love having all the things, right. by the way. We love having all the things. So we buy all the things that we're curious about and we do all that. <laughs> but, you know, like even kids, they walk into the shop and parents go, oh, don't touch anything. Don't touch anything. And I say, well, actually, I'm going to just suggest that kids are highly intuitive. So let them explore. Let them experience. Let them touch. Yes. With respect. <laughs> and, you know... Watch where they watch where they gravitate because those are the breadcrumbs that are being left. So there's no age limit. They innately have a sense, and we all have an innate sense of the things that we gravitate towards. So learn to trust that. Learn to incorporate that step by step, and eventually you're just going to build and grow your practice. And it's that simple. So let us know what questions you have. If there's specific recommendations you're looking for, your areas of interest that yeah, you we want love us it. to deep dive into, we'd be more than happy to do that for you. We want to hear from you always. And we ask that you yeah. share with your friends, like, and subscribe to this podcast. Yes. And you can find us on all the socials at Amityville Apothecary. Thanks for spending time with us. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye, guys. So we are going to pull a card for you to serve as the energy to carry you over the next few weeks until the next episode. So I just gave it a three time shuffle. All right, I'm gonna do a one, a one shuffle. I'm a sideways shuffler because I have child hands. <laughs> <laughs> we are pulling from the Smith Weight yes. deck, which is one of the OG original. Good decks. Lord. I oh, usually Lord. I usually use a travel deck, as I said, because I have such bad, I have such bad shuffling skills for big cards. That's all right. So hold on a second. Okay. Wow. We're going to stick him in. I don't that know why. He's upside down. Card, upside so. down and right side up. Right. So let's see. I'm feeling this guy again with the pentacles. That's all right. Again with the pentacles. So four of pentacles. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in the comings and goings of our money. We get like so protective that we block the energy of money. Danielle and I have, a, so I learned this saying from Danielle. <laughs> I reminded this one. I yeah. reminded her of this one because when we were in our early 20s living in a story together, I, she would always say like, it's just money. We'll just make more. <laughs> Which led to often a lot of fun decisions. <laughs> <laughs> Was it the wisest? I don't know. It worked out. So. Well, here we are. We did make more money. So we're not saying to be like footloose and fancy free with all of your coin, but a little bit of an opening up because you're guarding yourself. You're like using that money as a shield. And remember, people over belongings and to open yourself up to the energy of receiving yeah and also the number four represents foundation so four corners of a square creates a foundation so be smart about your investments don't be a miser don't hoard it but just be responsible and know like money provides us with experiences so go experience life you will make more what you put out into the universe you will attract back so go live and be merry Thanks. Thanks so much for listening to us today. We look forward to connecting with you again soon. So be sure to come back for the next episode. And make sure to follow us on social media. It's the fastest way you can get in touch with us at Amityville Apothecary, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. And of course, like, subscribe to this podcast. We are eternally grateful for your support.